According to the Washington Post, the United States Army has been interrogating IDF officers to investigate the failure of the Second Lebanon War. INN TV's Dennis Samuel spoke with military researcher Dr. Uri Milstein about this report. At least since the Six-Day War, the State of Israel has been a strategic asset for the United States. Because of this, since the Second Lebanon War three years ago, the U.S. Army has been inquiring into what happened in that war. According to the Washington Post, dozens of U.S. military crews debriefed IDF officers who fought in the Second Lebanon War. The Americans who themselves have the problem of fighting non-state terror groups or ones that are supported by states like Iran, they want to learn from us. By analyzing where we failed, they will understand where they failed as well. And they will try to reorganize to face such wars better in the future. What did the Second Lebanon War prove? That a terror organization can turn into a guerrilla organization, and then a guerrilla organization can turn into a regular army that uses commando tactics. And then, in the course of commando and anti-commando warfare between a former terror group and a conventional, clumsy, dogmatic, conservative and irrelevant army, it is the smaller and faster organization that wins. Of course, there is also the possibility that Al-Qaeda and other Islamic jihadist groups will under undergo this transformation from a hit-and-run terror group to a guerrilla organization with the ability to wage semi-conventional or even conventional warfare. Besides the Americans, other armies too want to understand just what happened on the battlefield in southern Lebanon. They all analyze the facts that are well known, but this is not necessarily the right tool for military research. Most of the officers that they spoke with are senior officers. The senior officers do not know what happened in the field. In order to know what happened in the field, you need to talk to the tank soldiers, with the tactical fighters, including the junior officers. Usually the junior officers don't talk at all. The ones who give the assessments and the conclusions are usually the senior officers, and they do not necessarily talk about what really happened, but rather what they think happened. This means that the analysis is based on myth, and so are its conclusions. That is why there needs to be a very high quality system which routinely debriefs everyone received all of the materials and which will be able to develop the basic insights which will serve for the training of soldiers in the future. As long as we do not do this, we are still in the previous paradigm which is no longer relevant.